What's good guys, it's Marcus. I go by M3 and today we're gonna be talking about how to get your 808s in tune and we're gonna be learning the three step process that you can use to keep them in tune now and forever. Honestly, I hear a lot of producers that have been struggling with this and don't even know that they're struggling with this and it turns some beats that could be really good into duds. Now, I know you don't want to be embarrassed by bringing out of tune 808s to the studio, so without further ado, let's get it. Step number one is to use relative pitch to find what note is being played by the 808. Sometimes it's not actually the note that you play on your keyboard, and we'll see that in just a second. So, what is relative pitch? Relative pitch is basically being able to hear a musical tone or being able to produce a musical tone at its correct pitch. So in other words, that means it's learning how to simply hear a sound and find that on a keyboard or using your voice. I know you may be thinking that sounds impossible, but the truth is, is that very few people are actually tone deaf. So you more than likely are actually able to develop your ear with just a little bit of practice. So now how do we practice that? We practice it by actually practicing singing. And I know you may be thinking, I'm not a singer, but the truth is you don't have to be. For example, I'm just going to sing a random pitch and I'm going to use my keyboard to find that note. I was kind of in between those two tones, but you get the idea. So the more that you practice that, the more that you can develop it. And that's something that you're going to be able to use, not just now, but forever. Step number two is to find the key center of the sample or loop. To do this, what you want to do is you want to listen for the lowest sound and use your relative pitch skills to find the notes that sound like home or the notes that the other notes seem to revolve around. You don't need to go crazy learning all of your scales to do this. You just need to simply use your ear. Step number three is to play the root of the chord with the 808. Take those notes that you use to find the key center and play those with the 808 when they happen. The root of the chord is just the note that the chord is formed off of, and you'll usually find that as the lowest note that's being played. All right, so now we're gonna put the three steps into action using a live example. All right, so I got my 808 pulled up here. Um, so when picking this one, I went with Golden Boy 808 here, and I wanted to pick something that had the fullness of an 808 and can really hold the bass down by itself. But I also wanted something that was a little crunchy and something that you're gonna hear a little bit in the high end. So let's see some of these other ones that I didn't pick so you can kind of hear why I chose this one. So see, that one is too short. So if I wanted to hold the bass, it's gonna have to kind of hold out for a while. That's also too short. So that one's long, but it doesn't really have the presence in the high end that I, I want for this um, 808. So that's why I ended up going with the Golden Boy. So let's do step number one. And what I what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna play a C, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna use uh, the piano to see if my 808 is actually playing what I'm playing on the piano. So. And remember, we want to pitch this up so we can actually hear the tone of it. Bum, bum. So remember that pitch. Bum. So that doesn't sound the same as that C, right? So what we want to do is try to figure out what's going to give us that. Bum. So instead of C, bum, bum, our 808 is playing that C sharp. Bum, bum. So even though I'm playing a C on the on the keyboard, the 808 is it, it sounds like a C sharp. So because of that, we know we're gonna have to bring everything down half a step. So for step number two, we're going to listen to it without any drums so we can focus on the pitches of the instrument and we're going to look for the instrument that has the lowest pitch and we're going to identify the root note 
by listening to that instrument. So this is it without the any drums. <laughs> So it sounds like that instrument is going to give us the lowest pitch. So let's see if we can hear it. So we want to find those pitches um, using our 808. So that should work. Let's let's play it. Um, let's play it and find out. That sounds right to me. And so, out of these three notes. seems to be revolving around this B. So B is our key center, uh, our key center, but we have to realize that that B is actually a C because of what we learned in step one. So by doing that, we already found the notes that we're going to be using in step three. So now let's talk about ways that we might want to make this a little bit more melodically interesting. So depending on what we're going for, we could just play the root of the chords right when they happen, and that might sound fine. So let's take a listen. Okay, so that sounds fine, um, but one way we can make it more melodically interesting is to play some of the other notes in the chord. So since we're using a B chord and it's a B minor chord, we can kind of go back and forth between this low octave of the B here and then this high octave. And what we'll use to kind of connect those notes is we're gonna use the fifth of the chord and we're going to use that to go back and forth. So let's experiment with that. I'm going to turn it, turn it up just a little bit more so you can hear it. You can also use the third, um, but because the chords kind of change really quick, for this example, we're not gonna use the third. We're just gonna stick with the fifth. Now, we can make it more interesting, not just with the melody, but also with the rhythm that we choose. So your 808 is really gonna be a partner to the kick drum. So here's what we'll do. Um, I'm gonna mute everything else except for the kick drum and the 808. And we're going to kind of see what we can do with that. Meet that triangle. So I'm just still kind of playing where the chords happen, but I can play pretty much anywhere that the kick drum happens and that'll that'll be a way to add a little bit more more bounce to the beat. So let's see that. That, 
that's that's the idea is anywhere that the kick drum plays the 808 can also play so with the kick drum and the 808 you want to decide pretty early on which one of those you want to be the star and which one you want to kind of be the background and there are some ways that you can mix it to where you can have one stand out more than the other and they can be partners instead of enemies so one way that we're going to be using to show that is sidechain compression so here i have my compressor open and what sidechain does basically is it allows the sound that you're compressing to duck down a little bit and then come back up so Right now I have my 808, um, as you can see it's side chain to group A1 source one, which is my kick. And so what that means is whenever, whenever they play at the same time, you're going to hear the kick, the initial impact of the kick, and then you'll hear the rest of the fullness of the 808. So let's just, let's just hear what that sounds like. So here's, here's what it sounds like with no compression. They're fighting a bit so here's what it sounds like with the compression so the 808 is just ducking down just a little bit and then coming right back up after the initial impact of the kick okay another way that you can use to make your 808 and your kick become partners is EQ. So I'll show that in just a second. So in my example, the 808 is gonna be the star. So what I wanna do is I'll just, I'll listen to where the 808 is. And you can see it's kind of peaking right around, uh, right around 30, 30 Hertz. So, and if we go to our kick, our kick is peaking right around 50. So what we'll do is I'm going to go back to my 808 and instead of boosting it at 30, because it's already pretty loud there, I'm going to actually cut a little bit of the, um, the frequency at around 50. So that way the kick has its place and the 808 has its own place. So what I also did was I took out a little bit of the uh, of the low mids, add in a little bit more, and then I boosted the higher frequencies. So that way, that way the 808's really gonna cut out compared to the rest of the mix, since the 808 is the star. And what I did with the kick, um, since the kick is peaking at 50, again I'm not gonna boost 50. I'm gonna actually cut around 30 where my 808 was so that way again you know they each have their own their own place and as you can see i'm kind of doing the opposite of what i did with the 808 here i want to boost the low mids to kind of give it that um give the kick that punch but then i'm cutting some of the high frequencies so that way the kick doesn't clash with the 808 um in the high end and you know if they if they did that you would hear a bit more because like i was saying earlier the higher the the pitch is the higher the more clear the tone is so that's going to do it for this video if you got some value out of it please be sure to share it with a friend let them know what you learned and if you're interested in more information on how you can do this for yourself then send me a dm and i'd be more than happy to help thank you for listening and i'll catch you guys next time